Hello everybody. There are only a handful of videos out there showing you how to replace the air filter on an E350, uh, a single filter. So this filter is on the passenger side. Let me just show you a few things that are not in those limited videos that are out there. Get the cover off. I've already released the latches. There are two E10 sockets to remove those two screws. And then the only other two items that need to be removed is this plug right here for this sensor and this clamp and then here is the intake air duct just push in on these two tabs there's a tab here and a tab down below just push on those tabs and this duct will move forward and those two tabs those two screws the sensor connector and this boot clamp uh, all you have to, to remove to get the air box off and then once you get the, the box off there are three torque screws that release the front and back half you can see one of them right there but give you access to the filter I'm going to concentrate you know, this video, this short video on just two items here one is this sensor right here the sensor is plugged into this housing and the way to release this sensor is you pry up on the little tab right here. I'm going to caution you to be very gentle with it because they break pretty easily from what I've read. So that gives you a quick view of that tab. Just use a small pry tool. The smaller the tool the better so you don't have too much leverage on it and you don't put too much force on it. But you're trying to pry that little tab right there. It's sort of gray in color. You're trying to pry that gray tab up to be able to release that connector. And then there's the sensor itself. Let me see if I can get it. There's a little locking tab on the sensor itself right there. There it is. So I've reattached the sensor. Here's the position of that clip when it's properly seated. And then uh, this clamp has to be released. I already have it in the release position, but I'm going to show you some close-up detail. I actually do not have the proper tool, which is the sign of a bad mechanic. All good mechanics have the right tools. But I did not have a hose pinch clamp. I'm going to show you what I use, but you do this at your own risk. I use this regular pair of nippers and a small pick tool. Here's what the correct tool looks like. And as you can see here, you can buy it on AliExpress for less than eight dollars with free shipping to the United States and you can get anywhere from four to eight percent or more back if you happen to link to AliExpress through Top Cash Back. If you're not a Top Cash Back user see the description below and use my referral link. Here's a close-up view of that clamp. Uh, the clamps released right now but you can see how it works here and once you understand how it works, you can see that it actually uh, can be removed without the proper tool. That's how it works. That's how the clamp works in the roughly the closed position. And here's what it looks like when it's in the latched, locked, or closed position. To put that clamp on, I just use my channel locks and just uh, pinch the, the clamp closed and it snapped on. Worked great, but do it at your own peril. I would suggest you pick up the right tool, but if you're in a bind and you've got this project already started and you didn't realize you needed the tool, uh, that's what worked for me, a pair of nippers and a uh, small right angle pick tool. And I was able to release that clamp. So those are the only hints I had for you today. I'm not gonna bore you with all the other stuff that you can read in other detailed videos that did not show uh, these two items in any great detail. Hope that helps you. If you found it interesting or at all uh, entertaining, how about subscribing to my channel or give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.